welcome to the cellar. Welcome to the cellar. Woo! Hey guys, it's Pete from Edit Cellar. Happy holidays. Just enjoying our office party here at Edit Cellar. Me and my one eyed cat. Jack, had a good year, right? Good year, buddy. All right. Party's over. Let me go do the tutorial. All right. Today, I got a pretty cool tutorial for you. Let me get my piece off here. What we're going to do here is we're going to show you the easiest way to put together an interview when you've shot it with a camera and an external recorder in Premiere. So this was shot in 4K and we're going to be finishing in 1080p. And the other thing is I'm going to show you um, theoretically how to use, if you have more than one camera, uh, some of the different th uh, things that are, are available for you. So let's get started. First, I wanted to show you uh, in our project window what we have here. We have our footage folder. Okay. We have a sequence folder. We have these merged clips here, which I'm actually going to put into a folder here. And call merged. All right, <coughs> and we'll get over what those are. And uh, let's get started. All right, so first thing we want to do is we want to identify our footage and exactly the easiest way. I mean, everything's about speed with editing. You want to do things in this. Uh, to me, not not to just run through things, but to do things as efficient as possible, so that you spend the l l least time on the stuff that's not editing, that's not the decision making part. You want all the other stuff to go as smoothly as possible. So that's what we always are shooting for, and that's what the goal is. So when you're shooting, when you have audio clips, you want to be able to read the clips, so you don't have to look through all the footage and match things up and listen for sound and all that kind of stuff. It just makes it easier to be able to look at something and tell exactly what it is. So the first thing you can see here is our first clip. <clears throat> The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this media duration column right here in my project window. And the important significance of that is I'm looking for clips that are about the same length and the order they're in because I have a lot more video clips here than I have audio, uh, than I have audio clips. And we want to match them up perfectly when we're going to do this. Um, <clears throat> Premiere does not allow you to merge audio clips with more than one video file. So <clears throat> the key is that you have to do it one at a time. If you're using a, another syncing software, uh, you know, something on the outside or something that's more expensive, that's not a problem, obviously. But for this particular situation, we're going to learn how to do it within Premiere. So <clears throat> what I notice here is that my first clip is a media duration of about three seconds. Obviously, that's not part of this interview. Just a warm-up clip, a test clip, color shot. So what I'm going to do is look at the next clip, and we have 127. And we have 117 here. That looks like a match to me, and that's actually what our first merge clip is up here, is this 127 duration. Our second clip follows the same structure, but I wanted to go over our second clip exactly how we got there. As you can see with the second clip here, its media duration is 7 minutes, okay? But this media duration is 1440. And what you need to know is all DSLRs, they have a, um, a safety feature in them where when you're shooting for data and you've reached the point of over a certain amount, seven minutes for 4K, I think it's about 12 minutes for 1080p. When you reach that data point where the, the amount of data ha has reached a certain point, what it does is it creates a new clip view in camera without ever stopping the camera rolling. And what that does is that um, helps you, let's say that your camera freezes, you don't, you're not going to lose, you know, eight minutes of a clip. You're only going to lose the last four or the last seven or the last three or, you know, however it works out. So... The point is, is that you need to know this when you get in that if you should clip was over whatever the point is where the clip splits, that you're going to have multiple clips in a row. However, you're only allowed to sync one clip and one audio clip. So what do we do here? So what we do here is we just match up the clip with the first clip. We're going to sync that audio by going to control click, going down to merge clips where you have, usually it's on in points. You go to audio here. I'm going to go max two because that's what this is and here and we're going to merge these clips here now what it's doing here is it's telling me to use the audio from the clip i want to use the the waveform audio obviously not the one from the video clip but it's not really going to matter anyway i'm going to hit okay and what it's going to do is it's going to process that file and it's going to give us this merge clip now this merge clip is good except that if you drag it on you're not going to be able to edit it and we like to have some editing prowess here so what we're going to do is we're going to drag it to the new item button here in your project window and create a new sequence as you can see here we are lined up audio wise uh, and good to go however we have a big gap here and we also have this annoying camera audio so what i like to do here is once i know it's lined up by listening specialize and we focus on fat loss what I'm going to do then is I'm going to mute the um, 
rough track, the scratch track, which was recorded in camera, and we're going to use the external source here. Now you're wondering, well, what's with this gap? Well, that's what we're going to come back to where the clip split. That's obviously going to be your next clip. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the following clip, we're going to drag it down here, and we're going to put it right here. Now, I have no idea why Premiere creates one audio file instead of two here, but again, it doesn't matter because I'm not using the scratch track, and I know, as you can tell here, that this is lined up perfectly. Workouts and the nutrition. All of this is customized and it's designed. As you can see, because I know it's a continuous clip. So here's where we cut, and I could just end the clips there. I'm using some uh, to do this. If anybody wants to know, I'm using my special uh, keyframes that I created. If you want to learn how to create custom keyframes, check out one of my other tutorials. Uh, it's got a whole breakdown. It's probably the single most time fa saving feature you can use in Premiere. Okay, bang. So what we have here now is we have the clips all merged, all ready to go, and they sound great. All I need to do is go in here, find out the points that I like, the points in the interview that are cut. I'm going to go through and I'm going to cut them, and then I'm going to have my rough sequence here that I can copy and paste from later on. So let's go back to my final. This is a, a 4K sequence. I want to go back to my final sequence here. And my final sequence here, let's just delete this. You can see is... I can do it one of two ways. I can cut and paste from this, or if I have a single clip, I can just use the nested sequence that we've created here. I have a sequence folder here. Inside it, I have my roughs. We have our max one, which is the first clip. Max two is the second cut. And I'm gonna go down and I would have all, by the way, this is max if you haven't figured it out yet. I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna have all the clips for everything we shot all cut up. And I'm gonna have all my rough sequences there. And again, I could pull the sequence directly in, or if we have a long sequence I can edit directly here on that sequence now remember this is 4k so what I like to do is I, I can scale to frame size I don't like to scale to frame size here because it leaves these black bars because the aspect ratio is slightly different on the GH4 which this is shot on so I'm gonna undo that <coughs> I found uh, best I just go to scale and I go to 50% and I like the way that looks covers up the whole frame and we are good to go take off my title markers so the point is on this thing, when you're using a nested sequence, I don't like to edit with these nested sequences because for some reason you can never see the audio. Uh, I have trouble with the audio populating. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I'm not sure what the reasoning is. Anybody who knows that, sure to fill in with the comments, that'll help. Um, but I'm, again, the waveforms don't seem to populate here. However, if I go here, I can easily see the waveforms and see where we're talking. Uh, and where the talking begins and so forth and so on. So I can go in where his, he's about to start. So, so the so best part, part of I can easily make a cut there because I can read the audio file. Let me also go over one more thing. Let's say we shot this two camera and I had a second camera here. How would that work? What I would do is I would do the same thing with both camera cuts. So I would have max one camera one and then I would create a sequence and a merge clip with max one camera two using the same audio file. Then what I would do is I would go in and I would take this thing. Let's say this was a uh, doubled here and what I would do here is I would delete the blue and I would just line this up on a uh, delete this and you can even delete one here I would delete one audio clip here so we would just have one audio clip one video then what I would do is I would bring this up on a second track and hold shift hold shift after you touch it and bring it down to an audio Whoa, what's going on here? there we go just drag it down you don't even have to hold shift that's only when you're dragging it like this, you can hold shift so you can bring down the audio clip. But what I would do then is I would bring this over here. Obviously, this is going to line up perfect because it's the same clip, but if it wasn't, and I would spend time just lining up the sequences till we got them perfect in there, then I would delete one audio clip and you would have your two camera shots up there. And you continue this if you have three camera, four camera. Uh, you could also use the multi camera editor first and foremost and all that kind of jazz, uh, which actually save you even more time. But this is how you do it if you're going to do this method. Real quick, if you have any questions, check out my comments. This is Pete from Edit Seller. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, and happy new year. Talk to you soon. Got a lot more coming in 2015.